What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 53 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archaeon the Everchosen Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, the armies of Azag and Azag himself have fallen uh, to the blades and spellwork of Archaeon's army, though Archaeon himself did play a pretty big role in that. I do believe that was the last of the major endgame scenario armies. We don't know what the broken axe have rebuilt in the time since but let's just take a quick look at their balance of power it was fairly strong before but now they're all looking pretty darn broken compared to us it looks like as soon as we manage to fully destroy these factions we'll be able to speed up the conquest once more as we've been uh, pretty slow let's say over the last few episodes as we've just had so so many battles to fight i don't think anybody's complaining though as they those battles that we did fight were pretty darn great Right. And it looks like we've got a few more to contend with here. Chant and the Flying Army will be taking Castle Drakenhof finally, right now, actually. Uh, you have Siege Attacker. Yes, yes, just had to make sure. And just to also make sure, you two are on steeds. You don't have the discs yet. Oh, I should probably level these two up, though. Uh, we will definitely want to get Faded Protector on them, but we don't have rank 7, so that won't do much for us. I think an Act True Change is probably going to be a fairly valuable ability here, as this army will be doing quite a bit of spell work. That said, wait, just to double check here, Chant. Iron Skin, Path to Glory, you've got Kindle Flame, Life Leeching, the rest of this is kind of mad, but you're going to be turning to a Demon of, or a Demon Prince of Zinch anyway. And though in a little bit, hopefully we can continue uh, gaining decent amounts of XP. I just want to see what your spells are like. You don't have Pink Fire. Okay, so we do need a little bit in the way of spell work. Let's get Searing Doom, Gehenna's Golden Hands one point, and then double points in Glittering Robe, as it's just too useful. We'll wait for an act true change for a little bit. And then you can have Blue Fires, Fires of Change, and then Pink Fires, which is the main thing that we like to spam. Not the most useful against the... Uh, uh, the defenders on the walls, perhaps, but I'm sure it'll be okay. You, sir, and what do we have for you? Hmm... I guess we can start making you just to be a fighter. The leadership aura may be useful to you, but it kind of bothers me that you don't have magical attacks. Uh, that said, the only way to give you magical attacks would be Ruinous Wrath, then. I guess we're going to have to go with Ruinous Wrath. Here's the thing. It's a Zinchin army, primarily, and you should have magical attacks. You don't because of the Brass Cleaver, but since this army is very likely to blob up, you should keep the Cleaver. Anyway, uh, I forgot to apply that other point. My bad, my bad. Uh, let's get your Blade Master. A single point, five melee attack, not a bad pick. Wagner Van Hal. Lots of Van Hals running around. Presumably related to the Van Hal, but anyway, uh, Sylvanian Crossbows, eh? These guys actually have a pretty good pick here. Lots of range units to put upon the walls. Not something you generally expect to see out of the Vampire Counts, but, uh, well. Uh, at the same time, I'm not sure it's gonna work so well against this army in particular, as we just have so many flyers. Anyway, Banner of Rage. Gonna have to pop that on our Lord, I think. Base weapon damage. I mean, once he's in Demon Prince form, he's going to be hitting real hard with that. And then the additional leadership, I think, has to go on... Probably the Golden Griffin of Theurgy. I'm gonna have to go with that. I mean, it really doesn't matter, but it does have to be a demonic unit so that it uh, doesn't melt away. Away, away we go. Oh, wow, they got two Vargulfs and two Blood Knights? I mean, it is Castle Drakenhof. They got some good defenders. Should be fun. Cannot hope to withstand the dark source. 
Alrighty, here we go. Flying Army still working on getting access to those uh, Doom Knights, although fortunately we do have our regiment of renown, but damn, it takes a long time uh, to level these guys up. Uh, not quite as long as perhaps the Juggernauts because we're in constant fighting with our Corn Army, but I mean, and. and in theory, anyway. In practice, or rather, no, in practice. In theory, it's uh, the same. But anyway, uh, the Flying Army absolutely wrecking face on top of the ramparts there. Anything on the walls is outright doomed. Not just by the Doom Knights, but by everything here. I guess it's sort of like a flying Death Star in its current form. Uh, but, uh, well, until we get these guys to be Doom Knights, that's going to... Uh, well, and it's going to be have... It's going to have to be the name of the game and it happened again didn't it yep it happened again uh <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the cockatrice got stuck. Alrighty, I don't know what's up with these cockatrices. Uh, they... I don't know if it's something wrong with their hitbox or just that Zinch doesn't like them. Uh, that he keeps screwing them over with these walls, but uh, it seems to be happening a suspiciously large amount of times or number of times to specifically that particular unit. So, anyway, if you're wondering why we blub down uh, down here, there's a necromancer somewhere in the middle of this horrific blob of flyers and I don't know if it's still alive but it probably won't be for too much longer and looks like the enemy has sent in its elites, Kotors and Vargulfs moving in, do have to be careful of the Vargulfs of course as we're gonna have a tough time or a relative tough time of bringing them down and hopefully the dragons can take care of that we got what two more levels to go with uh, chant here or at least a few more I don't even remember a few more levels to go with chant until we can uh, make him into a demon prince of Zinch to lead the flyers on the wing, which is what we prefer. I've been thinking about also leveling up uh, Jaeger as a uh, uh, as a demon prince of Zinch, but I don't know. But then we technically have no like regular lord of Zinch. And I think it's maybe better to have one uh, lord uh, regular and then one uh, uh, a one as a demon prince. Kind of like what we've been doing with all the other factions, except for Solanish. There was a question in a couple of episodes ago whether we've had any uh, demon princes or any lords of Solanish, and the answer in this particular uh, campaign is no, because we have the Azazel and the Sigvald army, and... Uh, the reason I decided not to do a, a Demon Prince of Slanish, or a Lord of Slanish, generally speaking, uh, is because we've sort of got all of the Slaneshi type of armies covered, essentially. If we get another undivided army or a mixed god army, we'll probably have a Slaanesh uh, sort of theme to it. I mean, we could use more demonettes. I guess we only have only two demonettes in one army, so if we pop, like, six demonettes in there, a few other things, there's potential for it, I suppose. Um, but I do think Azazel and Sigvald are covering most of our bases here. Anyway, uh, the blob work continues. I'm ranting away about other things because there isn't much to say tactically about this particular battle. Uh, just good old-fashioned um, Death Star slash blob tactics. Our elite units, or our big boys, are specifically trying to target those Vargulfs, which are just so hard to bring down. This one's still only down by about 30% HP despite focus uh, by the Dragons and the Lord of Change. The Golden Griffin of Theurgy, which is being attacked by this Vargo, is down to near half of its HP. Of course, we do have heals and we do have buffs, but uh, yeah, don't be underestimating those Bat Hulks. Perhaps they're particularly jealous of their inability uh, to fly. And us really want to uh, us really want to hurt our flyers. Looks like our Doom Knights and our Screamers are also in pretty bad shape, down to about half HP each, just like that Golden Griffin of Theurgy. Got to keep those buffs coming. There's a uh, Glittering Robe upgraded, which is another 25% physical resistance, and though the missile resistance isn't super relevant anymore, as most of the enemy range units have been taken care of. And I do mean most. We have uh, got our summoned allies on the field as well, both of the uh, Forsaken and the Chaos Spawn fighting against some Blood Knights here. And just to distract the Blood Knights and keep them away from the main blob, as our units are already suffering damage there, and, uh, well, they certainly, uh, uh, they certainly don't need to contend with Blood Knights in addition to those two Vargulfs. 
Speaking of the Vargulfs, how are we doing? There we go. Damn, that Vargulf dropped fast. A couple volleys, or actually a single volley from those Marauder horsemen took like 30% of its HP off. Uh, pretty intense. Uh, they can certainly do really good work with sniping, and I mean the javelin throwing uh, type of Marauder horses. Especially with the buffs that we have on them. I mean, their missile strength of 36 is nothing insane, uh, but uh, it's still a lot of damage all told, and they've got that warp fire application as well, though I think pretty much everything in this army does so. Yeah. Do have to be careful of those javelins hitting our own units, however, as in the same way that they damage the enemy quite a bit, as since they tend to target sort of like pinpoint target one unit, uh, they do have a tendency to damage your own units as well. Anyway, it looks like the Vargulfs have finally gone down and our monstrous flyers are able to wade into the Black Knights and the... Uh, uh, and the Grave Guard here. I don't know where the Blood Knights are, but they probably either moved away or are into other oh, in this formation. Okay. Yeah, we're just trying to target them. I kind of lost sight of them among the Black Knights there, but there's one. And there's another. Yeah, there's a couple Blood Knights in there. All right, and we are even sending in our Marauder Horsemen now. The reason for which being a, we need to keep popping their uh, uh, their sacrifice buff to keep damage up as high as we can on everybody, and b because a bunch of units are hurt. In fact, we've peeled away the most hurt units, which are the Doom Knights and the two Screamers of Zinch. Obviously, the units that are uh, uh, that are not single entities like most of the uh, bigger guys here, and they're going to try to knock out this Master Necro and the enemy range units. Uh, that are out here. I'm not going to bother looking at them though because that's in the dark portion of the map and we can't see anything there. Alright, flying army. Keep getting that XP on those uh, on those Marauder Horsemen. We do have that other army though that's recruited I believe three Chaos Knights in addition uh, which have uh, been gaining levels by virtue of uh, being permanently in raiding stance, so we might actually be able to trade them to this army and get them to become Doom Knights faster than the uh, uh, than the Marauder Horsemen of Zinch. This was a suggestion from a couple of comments over the course of the last uh, a little while, and it does seem to be working decently well. It's just taking a long, a long time, it feels, to recruit those units, as uh, the uh, chance to recruit a Chaos Knight it's like 10 to 15%. I don't remember what the exact percentage is. And uh, the turns are going by really slowly right now because of the massive numbers of battles. So yeah, it just feels like many, many episodes before we can recruit one. Anyway, uh, looks like the enemy army is pretty much done for. The Master Necromancer has been destroyed on this side and most likely his death coincides with the rest of the army routing. There is a black coach out here, which the enemy stupidly did not send in. Granted, we would have targeted the thing, uh, but at the same time, the... Uh, uh, well, I mean better us target it and it actually do something than it sort of sit here and have done nothing throughout the uh, throughout the battle anyway i believe we're going to have to find the black coach but we can do that off screen ah, but you know what let's watch it get destroyed by the oh there we go we get destroyed by a few volleys of javelins i was gonna say we chase enemies down but you know effectively the same thing all right let's get another volley in there try not to hurt yourself okay that probably killed off a few of our own units This damn big old tree in the center of the uh, of the enemy settlement keeps forcing the camera to jump around. There we go. That's a nice volley. And this poor black coach, 369 HP, and down it goes, having achieved absolutely nothing throughout this uh, throughout this battle. I kind of like the uh, the sight of all these Marauder horsemen streaming through the enemy city. Of course, if they encountered anything that is a remotely hard target, they'd get obliterated, but against single entities, they ain't too bad. Now, let's see if they racked up some nice XP, though, shall we? Ah. 
All right, very nice, very nice. This army remains a little bit more blobby than I'd like at the current time, but needs must until we get the uh, uh, the Marauder horses upgraded into actual Chaos Knights, or not Chaos, well, Chaos Knights and then ideally Doom Knights eventually. Uh, we're going to have to continue the whole blob tactics thing because we can't really spread this army out as it is too fragile while it's missing nearly half of its... Uh, uh, of its force, so. And gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, uh, looks like Drakenhof has fallen. A big loss, at least for the vampire camps. We're gonna sack the place as we do need XP in this army. Quite a lot. I, uh, I was hoping that we'd be able to use you to reach another settlement this very turn, but it looks like it's not possible, which means we could just use you to occupy Castle Drakenhof then. Alright, that's fine. Man, I suppose we could have drawn ourselves closer to another settlement as well, but ooh, a talisman of preservation. Once you become a demon prince, perhaps we give this to you. But anyway, uh, ransacker for you, chant great for you, Ludred. Ludred. Mm, we could actually send you to Castle Templehof, though it is reasonably defended and we'd have to fight, and this isn't really an army, as in it's not supposed to actually fight. It was only made to uh, sort of annoy enemy territories. I think, wait, can you take Zufbar maybe? Hmm. Hard to say. You know what? Go here and besiege Zufbar. We can perhaps use you to take it. Allowing Chan to sack Oakenhammer and then maybe move to Castle Templehof after that, we'll see. And Pyrrhic victory, nobody will die. Well, that's just wonderful. A lot of resolve. And don't care about the damage. Uh, don't care about sacking it either, just like about. And don't care about holding it either, but. <laughs> I mean, it is still iron, and hey, why not? More armor for our Chaos Warriors. Uh, though not our chosen, sadly. Alright, you. Move in... I don't know, any stance. Pick a stance, any stance at all. Actually, I have ideally a stance that doesn't have you suffer attrition. You're also supposed to give these doggos to Ludred, but... I guess you still can go for it. We can still send you to grab Oak and Hammer for us. And like so, there we go, Ladred. That might have helped with the auto resolve a teensy bit. You move outside of Castle Drakenhof and stay together with Chant. And this gets us all the way to Grom Peak, and we still need to, to grab Karag Dromar. All right, that's fine. Now. I do believe that that was a warm-up. We still have another battle against the Vampire Camp, specifically Vladi and Uberzerik. I don't imagine he stands too much of a chance against Ch Jaeger's army, but it is Vladi. And he'll always be a tough... Actually, I'd be curious to see how the Soul Grinders fare at trying to knock Vlad out as one of the uh, tankier lords in the game. Close victory, low casualties, I know, I know, but that just means it's a quick battle, so no more yammering. Go. Alrighty, that was the wrong way to send the camera. Apparently missed like half of that speech, but oh well, oh what can you do? Anyway, here we go. I guess it's a Zinchen kind of day and under my favorite type of lighting. I like that it's sort of like a, a dark but visible map. Uh, it's really nice, always makes for atmospheric battles, or at least it's a variant of my favorite type of lighting. Anyway, Vlad is going to have a pretty bad day as he takes blue fires and a couple of volleys from those magical javelins, but does counter us with a uh, Storm of the Night, unexpectedly perhaps, and not a great time for us as he used that at the exact same time that we popped our Forbidden Rod. Generally, I like to pop those Forbidden Rods while, uh, also Sanesha Giggle, but uh, uh, I like to pop those Forbidden Rods when we have our barrier up, as it does, doesn't hurt our unit. But between that and the Storm of the Night, suddenly a Jaeger drops by a massive amount of HP, 30% and looking to drop down to 50. As usual, we've um, sent our much faster flamers out uh, towards the enemy army because they can simply back off should they desire to do so and I can burninate quite a few of the much slower enemy uh, army <laughs> and look at those poor graveguard and skeletons either flying or frying good job bro I I'm proud of myself for that one <laughs> And, oh damn, a lot of misses by the looks of it as our units were trying to fire up into those bats. And, huh, I didn't think that these projectiles would travel this long. It's kind of cool looking, actually. 
Yeah, thanks for a nice, uh, nice Adzinchen atmosphere to this battle with all of these uh, eldritch fires flying overhead with little symbols in them as well. Anyway, uh, all of that was merely a distraction. Vlad is down to about 25% HP, and though he may be Vlad, I don't think he's going to survive this. As in, I don't think he's going to be able to reach our battle lines. And what the AI should have done here was probably to try to stay in the... Uh, uh, to have Vlad stay in the blobs of his own units so that we wouldn't be able to target him as well. But the AI isn't really uh, aware of that ability. At least I've never seen the AI purposely do such a thing. Anyway, gotta love the Flamer army and it will continue to impress. Enemy units will move towards it. Looks like most of the bats have been destroyed as well and their skeletal little friends are going to follow soon shortly. Unfortunately, we do get charged by the enemy two units of Crypt Horrors, which are a fantastic unit and a mainstay of the Vampire Count's roster. And down goes Vlad. All right, kind of missed him getting wrecked there, but uh, well, we saw his HP drop. Anyway, we're going to have to pop the Gaze of Fate on both of those units of Crypt Horrors, allowing our Flamers to back off and our units of Chaos Warriors of Zinch to move in. The Halberds at least should come in very handy at uh, bringing down those Crypt Horrors, and we can also keep them locked in place with our Exalted Hero as well as our Lord while we take a few Javelins to their backs, or they take a few javelins to their backs. Not quite as effective as against big old single targets or against the lords because a uh, javelin will bring down a single crypt core and thus there's a lot of overkill damage there. But it's all good. We're even going to send the two uh, units of soul grinders in to fight the melee battle while we set up uh, the rest of the fight. Enemies continue moving in. We've left a gap in the center of our lines to allow our flamers to burninate anybody that gets close. On the rightmost flank, we have a few flamers and our two units of marauder horses of Zinch uh, backing us up here, just in case we need to countercharge something that tries to go for the flamers. Similarly, as we did with the units of uh, Chaos War to get them behind the lines. Man, I love watching this army fight. It's just so fun. I think fire armies always, uh, always exemplify the whole spectacle, glorious spectacle aspect of uh, this particular game. And which is why I always build them in pretty much every campaign I can. Anyway, uh, looks like the leftmost flank of the enemy is suffering the same exact issue. Three units together just took a volley uh, from a unit of the, oh, of the Ever Chosen's Will in particular, which have been around for a long, a long time, burninating foes uh, the entire time. And considering the flamers are fairly fragile, I'm glad we haven't lost them. It would have been a shame. There we go. The skeletons continue running forward, but they are too slow. Even if they do catch up to the flamers, they're just not going to survive. And even then, the skeleton warriors, we could probably take them in melee, especially with the exalted flamers. Though it looks like the battle won't be lasting too much longer. The fires of Zinch proved too much uh, for the undead, same as they proved too much for the orcs. Though I suppose originally I decided to send the uh, Flamer army here specifically uh, because it's a great counter to the vampire counts. Or at the very least to their infantry heavy armies. Probably not so much the Death Star armies, but then again, who knows? You can probably, uh, with a nice Tormentor Sword and the fact that the Exalted Flamers and regular Flamers both do plenty of damage to single entities as well, and the fact that we have our uh, uh, snipey little Soul Grinders, I can probably handle the other thing as well. Just got to be careful about uh, getting big range units like Terror Geists and Vargeists uh, attacking our... Uh, uh, attack in our flamers, but that's why we have our chaos warriors with hellbirds. Either way, it's a nice army, it works well, and it proved it yet again right here. Sorry, Vlad. Alright, well it looks like the Soul Grinders remain pretty darn effective, whether it be Vlad or anybody else at uh, sniping them down. So well done to them as always, every time well done to those uh, Flamers of Zinch. I absolutely love this unit and uh, will continue to do so. Everchosen's will has been with us for a very... 
a very long time in particular and continues to rack up those kill counts. Now, I don't imagine that we can sack here. It would be nice, but I'd rather not risk... Actually, no, we can risk it because... Sack it, summon, summon, summon... Ah. No, actually, we can care. <laughs> we can occupy it anyway. I was thinking we send Hudakai Sidious to it and allow you to move, but since you have barely any movement remaining, we can have you occupy it instead, sir. Well done, Jaeger. Jaeger's uh, made his way quite a ways, let's say. Uh, he's been around for quite a long time as well. Started all the way up here, uh, fighting this nonsense, and then moving down here, and then through Bretonian territories, fighting tons and tons of orcs now into the Empire, though I'm sure we'll cross him back over as we don't have enough armies out here at the current time. Yeah. Also, it feels like it's been a while since we've vassalized anybody, but I don't think there's anybody left. Uh, Soldier Tor. <laughs> we could, but with only one territory to them, there's not really much. Last Defenders, Wardens of the Living Pool. I mean, we could just sort of subjugate them, but uh, by defeating them, but it hardly matters. Also, what are we at? 732,000 money. Though a single Temple of Chaos, or whatever the buildings are called, uh, now costs like... 200,000 or something like that, so yeah. All right, uh, they've come to the wrong place for you, as that's what we're doing everywhere, and I've also started to build these warband camps everywhere as well, and just a little bit extra and defenses. I would normally probably trade all of these territories to our allies, but A, our allies are completely useless, and B, uh, the uh, they're probably less likely to be able to defend these territories than we are, even with the garbage outposts or chaos altars that we uh, put down. I feel like there should be a high level tech to uh, to chaos that essentially buffs up the chaos altars by giving them a slightly uh, better garrison. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just like, I don't know, like two to three extra units would be a pretty big... Uh, uh, pretty big difference. It's not like we'd be getting any economic advantages out of those guys anyway, so hardly matters in that regard either. Anyway, Kai Queen Kalida's around. I don't know whether she'd be willing to fight Norvegicust, but I guess we'll find out in a sec. Uh, Glugmere. We do want you to get to retinue physician, so I guess esteemed combatant is the way to go. It's not like you're liable to easily get killed with uh, a regular enemy's attack anyway. These guys are pretty tanky is what I'm getting at. Will Kalita fight? Probably not with this, huh? Nah, it's a fairly weak force, and... We can't chase her down. We'll probably get hurt if we do, but... Well... And that's just fine. And Oregicus has already defeated her. I think we're not going to bother fighting. This is just a bunch of garbage skellies, and we just fought a bunch of garbage skellies. Now let's see what this does to our army. Wow. Wow, auto-resolve. Wow. <laughs> Why? Why? The Chaos Warriors have like 230 armor against this. I guess they got obliterated by the uh, Screaming Skull Catapults in this, but the Screaming Skull Catapults should have been obliterated by our own range units, especially the Plague Claws, which outrange them. So, rude. So, so rude. Alrighty. Uh, let's pop you into encamp stance so that you heal a little bit more. Not like you really need the other thing. And let's pop you into... Actually, stay in summoning stance. Yeah, stay in summoning stance, just in case we need it. We should probably send you all the way out here to knock out Kalita for good, so she doesn't keep getting these armies back up. Though that probably means Numas will be retaken. It's not like we really care about Numas. It looks like we do need another army down here. Hmm. I guess the question is which ones will be sent. Well, you know what? All of these armies up here are slowly making their way southward anyway. It's just that the Bloody Hands were sort of in their way, but they are no longer, or at least not much. Certainly not uh, to the degree that we need multiple armies to deal with them. Anyway, Vashnar, I believe you're Archie's pet, yes? Yeah. Kagan is Gulator's pet, you're Archie's pet, uh, which means we need you. Ow! Oh. Arcan will reinforce if we do this? Oh, I don't know that. But that's good. That's real good. A little bit... Uh, the auto resolve is probably gonna hurt our giants, but well, I guess uh, we're used to it. You get used to it. Auto resolve? Let's see the damage on those giants. Yeah, a little bit. Not too bad, to be honest. I'm happy with that. Alright. Okay, you're gonna continue picking up tons of items, but you don't need them. You're just here to help Archie out. And 
Lots of snuffling pump wagons, eh? Hmm. Anyway, we could get these guys. Probably not, eh? Eh, we'll get them next turn. That's fine. Vashnar, sit here. Alright, and I do believe with that we're ready to end the turn. So in the turn we shall skip, skip, skip back. Commandments available. We gotta get those because they've come to the wrong places up and running. Damage building... Yeah? Yeah, sure. I really wish gold mines were just a little bit more useful, but at the same time, I mean, chaos, gold, do they really care? They probably don't. Not as much as I wish that missions were more useful. As in, from allies other than the Norskans for whom we just don't care, as they give us nothing. And they're sort of just there. And the garbage armies that we can take from them using the... Uh, uh, using all of the allegiance are also not super useful, and they're also far enough away from us at the current time, so as to not really need them. They'll probably, like, the ten turns that you get to use them will probably be up by the time we, uh, well, get any kind of distance. Alright, anything else? Just grabbing all the outposts at- oh. I kind of expect this guy to die, which is why I haven't built the outpost there. I'm just upgrading everything so it doesn't bother us at the end of every turn. Usually something I do between the episodes, but since this is an end turn, well, it is what it is. All right, now we can end the turn. Yeah, there, apparently there's another commandment available. They've come to the wrong place. Another commandment available. And they've come to the wrong place. Ah, eh, might as well upgrade that unicorn gate as well. Keep the gates upgraded. We should, in theory, trade them to Nagron, and maybe we will once they're at Tier 3 so that he can maybe hold them? I don't know. Anyway, let's see if the uh, forces of Ultharian the Grim Sally out to attack Demahar Crow Brother, who's currently besieging them. Looks like Tyrion has returned at the Shrine of Loic, but has lost the Shrine of Assyrian and Lothurn itself, so I just don't see him recovering. In fact, Ulthuan has, I think, five or six settlements remaining, all told. A peace treaty with Aranas Assault Spite. Huh. Are we near any of her territories? I mean, I guess these guys, this little territory right here. Not so much. Hmm. Is, let's say, unlikely to become our vassal. Oh, and she's allied with Arcan, who does not like us. Eh, I don't think so. Might have been a fine thing to do, I just don't think it'll serve much purpose. And Gulator will be the one to get attacked. Okay. Good luck with that. Better orcs than you have tried and failed, good sir. Uh, auto resolve this, and I do believe that is Azag's faction destroyed. Yes, that was their last territory after all. And hello, what do we have here? Roland Gorst. I don't know who you are. This was just a temporary army, but you know what? We have piles of Nurglings here, and we can't cast any magic, so this might actually be fun to fight. And if we lose Nurglings, we can get them back in infinite numbers. Let's do this. Well, basic units versus basic units. Why the heck not? Go. Alrighty, here we go, and I guess a third three battles against the vampire counts uh, in particular, uh, which, uh, which is pretty interesting. I mean, we did have lots of battles where we were just facing off against orcs for the entire episode, so why not? Oh, why not the vampire accounts uh, to get a little bit of that variety in there? And speaking of variety, we haven't had an army with this just giant pile of nerglings do its thing, so... And we're damn well gonna see it here, uh, with a few reinforcements as well. Uh, we do have to be careful about the enemy terror guys, but we do have a giant in this army that should be able to take care of that, more or less. Or at least that was the plan. I was gonna 
send this Chaos Feral Manticore around to kill off that enemy Master Necromancer, especially as he's so, so slow on that corpse card of his, and would be a great target for him, but it looks like the enemy Terror Geist will be going after our own Chaos Feral Manticore for a nice little aerial duel. Let's compare the stats here, shall we? In theory, the Terror Geist is a much, much stronger uh, unit because of that anti-large and that bone crusher, and, well, it's sort of specialized to kill this sort of thing. Uh, it's also got more armor piercing. Hmm. On the other hand, our Manticores are pretty darn buff. They've got more melee defense and more melee attack. They do apply that uh, poison, reducing the Terror Geist's capabilities. A less armor piercing, perhaps, but we have 55% physical resistance and the enemy does not have magical damage. So, will the physical resistance or will the enemy's armor superiority tell? Who will win the day? Place your bets now, folks. It's an aerial... Uh, it's an aerial grudge match, I guess. Anyway, who's going to go for a single unit air superiority here as we've each brought a single unit? Uh, looks like it's about even so far. Both units have lost about 10% HP while the rest of the enemy army approaches ours and gets ready to start contending with those little nerglings. Uh, we do have our two very badly hurt units of Hounds of Decay all the way in the corner as they're going to have to be the ones to go after the Master Necro while we've kept in the healthier units of Hounds of Decay in the middle of our formation here. I just figured that, well, they might be useful. Anyway, it's zombies versus nerglings. A really fun matchup that's always a lovely to watch. I love nerglings, I love zombies, and I love watching the two on field together. Uh, the enemy is probably going to get outdone here, though, in the sense that the zombies aren't going to be too threatening to the nerglings, but they do have other units arriving. Dire doggos and black knights charging into the back of our lines, but that's one of the reasons we have our own Doggos here, and they should be able to protect our flanks. And a rear out here, it looks like, oh wow, the enemy Terror Geist is getting absolutely wrecked. Down to about half HP on our Chaos Feral Manticore, and I also want to point out that it's got no veterancy, and the enemy's at rank 7, so it's about maxed out, but the Manticore is wrecking face. Impressive, I gotta say. Can't discount that uh, physical resistance. And down goes the enemy terror geist. Very, very nice. I thought that particular unit would be a lot uh, tougher of a contender in this particular battle, but it looks like we've got the manticore to thank for taking it out before it could do anything. The zombies continue facing off against the nerglings, uh, both units probably dying in droves here. And while we could send in a lot more of our other units to help out with this, it's just it's just fun watching zombies versus nerglings. And it's a contest that could last for a very, very long time if both armies were healing each other. Healing each other or healing themselves, not not each other. But we're not really doing that here. We're not capable of it, rather. And the enemy is, but is going to be looking to have a pretty bad day as the Manticore has found that Master Necro and the Doggos have as well. That's a lot of poison to contend with, and they slow him down for the giant to wade through the ranks of the enemy zombies and go after that poor Necro. No heals for you, sir. And he's trying to run, but a corpse cart is not the best getaway vehicle. Oh, let's face it. And we don't even need to send the giant after him anymore. Now the Manticore will take care of it. If it can take care of a Terror Geist, it can certainly take care of a, uh, of a single a unit. Of a corpse card, I mean. I got distracted by the, you know, doing stuff. <laughs> Use of the camera, I guess. Well, our army is more or less in a Death Star as we tend to do with some of our Nurgle armies. Uh, don't do it as much with Gullators and don't do it as much with our, uh, uh, with Norvegicus, the Sensor Bearers army, but this one as and Festuses are certainly going to have to. I mean, this isn't really a Nurgle army, it just kind of happened as we needed some extra units and the uh, Nurglings were freely available. So we just put a, p a pile of them into this army, and just so we could take a few, uh, a few extra territories and defend against some stuff. So why not? 
it's clearly it's clearly helping out especially as it's giving us a nice little fight at the end of the campaign with basic units versus basic units which i think keeps campaigns interesting i get really bored of just doom stack versus doom stack super elite units a wrecking face in like two seconds another thing with the super elite units is that they do have a tendency to kill very very quickly especially things like uh, uh, artillery and enemy like artillery and range units and when the when you have the hyper elite versions of them they just melt enemy armies long before you see any kind of contest and i love the melee contest uh, it's another reason why i don't tend to drop too many damaging spells uh, unless they're needed to win the battle i just like to let the units have their fun or unless the enemy has such a massive surplus of troops uh, that uh, uh, that you gotta, or can freely drop spells without putting too much of a dent in their army. I have a meaning to have the blue scribes essentially take an army on by themselves, though. I'll make sure to do that. And just see how much damage they can do by themselves with dropping tons and tons of spells. Anyway, it looks like once again we carry the day. We are the bane of the dead today as all three uh, of our armies are victorious against the Counts. And Vlad's probably on the back foot and the, vam and the Empire of Undeath is looking to fall. All right, very nice, very nice indeed. We've got a uh, few units survive. Of course, the Necros survived, but hardly surprising. But the Terror Geist did not. Interestingly, though, or I think the most interesting aspect of that particular fight was learning uh, that an unchevroned, a rank one or rank zero, whatever, uh, rank one, I guess, Chaos Feral Manticore is twice as strong as a uh, uh, as a rank seven Terror Geist in a one on one of course uh one on one is i mean it, it doesn't quite 100 percent represent the strength of an individual unit depending on what they're good against on the other hand the terror geist is an anti-large unit uh which is generally speaking should be specialized against the chaos feral manticore but that 55 percent resistance and the massive amount of melee attack that the mayor that the feral manticores have due to their buffs are well it's pretty telling anyway and we're gonna kill the captives where were you again? Oh, you're outside Fort Berg Beret, eh? All right. Alberic de Bordelot wants peace. I don't even remember the last time we fought you, sir, but I do remember uh, that we will be destroying you. Nelosi of Sildratur will probably destroy you just because you exist and just because you are not our current vassal. And no reason other than that. And there we are. What is this? Mass executions gives us massive control versus overpowering force, which would probably fix our money situation, but with 711,000 to our name, I don't think we care. Mass executions it is. And just for fun. Alrighty. Sacrifice to math and enemy killed in battle. Yada, yada, yada. Lichbone pennant. Warrior bane. Always nice. Kagan. You are just a follower. I really should have renamed all these guys to followers so I know which lords should be keeping their items and which ones shouldn't, uh, but regardless. Uh, bone Rattlers are uh, done. Wounded. Ch oh, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> that was one of the exalted uh, uh, heroes of Nurgle that was going to Festus's army, but it looks like that one at least uh, will go there no longer. Hmm, well, what can you do? Uh, he'll be back, I'm sure. Iron Curse Psycon, Engines of Mass Destruction. We don't have enough Hell Cannons, unfortunately, to take too much of an advantage of this, other than in our Hell Cannon army, which, incidentally, is back into the way of the uh, World's Edge Mountains. I wanted to move it down here, but it's going to take a long time. Could try to go after the dwarfs. Thorgrim Grudge Bear nearly has an army ready to go. In fact, maybe it would be a good idea to move them this way. Just to make sure that we catch Thorgrim before he starts retaking territories. In particular, all these cultist, camp that, cultist camps rather that buff our manticores and stuff. Anyway, I think with that we're out of time. There's probably a decent amount of admin to do since it's the storm, start, rather, storm, start of a new turn. And just to pop everybody into locations where they will continue to fight. And next time around we will continue looking for more fights and uh, looking to move towards knocking out those broken axe 
and what would so oh, then bloody hands for good and try to get that fourth and ultimate campaign victory at the very least anyway stay tuned for more archie don't forget to leave those likes and comments below as that will determine how quickly this campaign continues to be posted all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching